This video is about how to produce ratcheting with the Behringer 960 sequential controller, the 962 sequential switch, and in this case using a Behringer 921 VCO to control the rate of the ratcheting. Um, the VCO is operating as an LFO, not as an audio source. So, here's a sequencer without ratcheting. One note per step. So here we are introducing ratcheting. More than one clock pulse, or gate pulse, or note per step. Here we have the Behringer 960 sequencer with the 962 sequential switch and on the left a standard Behringer 921 voltage controlled oscillator. I emphasise that the 921 is being used as an LFO and is not playing any part in any sound production here. The, app, the CV output from the channel number one of the sequencer here is going into a 2HP tune module because I'm rubbish at tuning in the um, control pots otherwise and the output of that is going to my 901 AB VCOs via a 904A filter. So if we plug in the oscillator output into a voltage trigger to S trigger interface which is then driving the VCOs and start things we get a sequence. So, how do we modify this to get ratcheting? Well, the first important thing is that the 921 voltage controlled oscillator is what is going to provide the trigger, or if you prefer, gate pulses. And on that, I'm using the plus output with the separate level control for maximum output level. So there we see we've got pulses. next thing is that the output of the second sequencer channel is going to go into the frequency control input. So if we start things, I'll turn these down, and the settings does depend on the frequency settings. Now there's one other thing we need that is we need to synchronize the VCO to the sequencer. So we take the oscillator output of the sequencer and we plug it in to the clamping point V trigger input. Now some adjustment is required because they need to be running roughly at the same speed. So if we now turn up one of the controls on channel 2 of the sequencer, we start getting ratcheting. I have to emphasise that these controls are not controlling any form of division, they're just providing a control voltage to the VCO that speeds it up. So it's not that you get integer numbers of additional steps or beats. You, know, you can have one step, you can have two steps, two and a half steps in essence. So there, that's a pretty good triplet timing there. Okay, so if I stop this, you'll notice that there's a problem. Even though the sequence has stopped, we still have the clock pulses driving the envelope generators. This is where the sequential switch comes in. So, rather than the square wave output from the VCO going direct, we now take it from the output of the sequential switch and instead, and this is the red wire, the input goes and I'm going to use channel 2. So what we now need to do is to control the sequential switch 
and the controller oscillator together. And luckily, the sequential switch has trigger output. So channel number one, I'm going to plug into the sequential switch off. And channel number two is going to be my on. So I plug that into the sequential switch on. So now my controller is not the buttons on the sequential controller oscillator, it's on the sequential switch. So number one is off, pink wire, and channel two, which then switches the clock pulse on, is on. So there we have ratcheting. It does take some fiddling to get the timings right because, as I say, this control row is controlling the speed of the oscillator. It is not controlling any form of absolute division by integer numbers. But there's ratcheting with a 960, a 962 and a 921.